Hey guys, welcome back to the Matt to Million channel. And in today's clip, we're gonna be taking a look at a big question that is being asked in the industry at the moment. And that is how long would you need to trade or what's a realistic time frame for you to be able to get to a point where you could leave your nine to five job or normal job, as it were. So in this video, I'm gonna run you through how you can take a small 1,000 pound personal account and in alignment with using one prop account, either with FTMO or funding talent or whatever, how if you use it smartly and use smart risk management, how you can grow that from 1,000 to a six figure account of 100,000 in about 12 to 15 months. Now, this isn't a clickbait video, and I'm sure everyone says that, but the reality is, is that if you do follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I've actually taken these principles and I've applied them for myself over the last 12 months as well. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through all of the figures and explain it all through to you, just so as you get an idea of what is realistic and what isn't. Now, I know that some people always go in and show what it would be like if you weren't sort of 60 or 70% a month and how quick you can do it. That isn't the intention of this video. I'm gonna do it in three different levels of returns as well. So maybe you're a 10% a month trader, maybe you're a 5% a month trader, maybe you're a 3. 5% a month trader, whatever it may be, it's just to give you an idea of how much you could earn by a certain point and then what that would mean in terms of trying to earn an income off it and whether it would allow you or if you feel comfortable to leave your nine to five or normal job uh, at that point. Now, as I said, there is a huge amount out there at the moment where people are saying, you know, seek that financial freedom, trying to become financially free through Forex and all the rest of it. So first of all, I really want to just uncover in this video and hopefully give you all of the tools so as you can assess how realistic is it, what sort of time frames you need to set aside and, and what sort of amount would you be happy with in terms of earning on a yearly basis. In the day of the prop world, so many people do discount the personal account and I'm hopefully I'm gonna be able to demonstrate to you how it becomes more important as you use it wisely over time. And ultimately, when you're looking for financial freedom, you don't want to be reliant on one institution or multiple institutions that are providing you the platform for your income. So yes, we should be using them right now and trying to use that availability to scale up the small accounts, but hopefully you'll get an understanding now by using the personal account and the potential benefits that it could have moving forward. So of course, everyone wants to get rid of their boss and everyone wants to be their own boss. Um, so this video hopefully will give you an idea of timeframes in terms of your returns and whatnot. And I know I've already said it, but a big thing for me, and it always has been, is that you should always focus on your personal account too. It's very easy to get carried away with the latest prop advancements in the prop firm world, and they are absolutely fantastic, and there's no, you know, I, I use them. Um, but the point is, if you wanna be completely financially independent, your personal account is a very powerful tool. And hopefully as we go through the figures, you'll start to understand my reasoning behind that, and also why using a personal account in conjunction with FTMO and funding talent is actually your best choice, and hopefully gonna provide you the most independence as the years go on. Now, I should point out that this video is intended for people with the FTMO funding or the funding talent funding as things stand, um, or people that are likely to pass it very soon. Or, you know, I mean, if, if you are just interested in understanding what the potential could be, then this video will be suitable for you too. But in terms of the calculations, I'm taking it into account that you've already got the funded account. So when I go from month one, it will be taken into account you working on a funded account and your personal account. So as always, guys, if you have been enjoying the content lately, then please just smash that likes up button. It means a huge amount to this channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also make sure that you've got the alerts and notifications turned on so you don't miss for when I post my next video. Cool, so let's get to it. How can you turn your 1,000 pound personal account up to a 100,000 pound account using FTMO or funding talent? Now, those of you that know me so far will know that I always value the personal account above the prop firm just because there's far less red tape and far less restrictions. But ultimately what the prop firms are offering is fantastic for being able to scale up a small account like there never has been before. And by using them effectively, hopefully this video will show what could be achieved over the next one, two or three years. Now, one of the biggest issues in the trading industry at the moment and especially with the sort of Instagram frauds and God knows what else with the scammers and everything that everyone has seen um, is is that everybody is sort of aiming for these eye-watering profit targets on a daily basis or a weekly basis or even a monthly basis and kind of lose sight of what you're looking to achieve on the long term and also what can be achieved in the long term by just being consistently good and not sporadically fantastic. The whole quote of we overestimate what we can do in a day and underestimate what we can do in a lifetime is just really applies to this in my in my opinion. Time and time again, you just see people stunting their growth based on their short term frustrations and eagerness to impress from from the gates. Okay, so let's crack on with the figures. How can you grow that £1,000 personal account smartly using FTMO and funding talent? Now for the purposes of this example, and just so as it keeps things clean, I'm gonna assume that you're starting with a personal account of £1,000 and you've got an FTMO funded account of $100,000 or a funding talent funded account of $100,000. But of course, from here, you can adjust 
the calculations, it will just give you an idea of what to expect, but you can sort of input different account sizes so you can figure out exactly what it would be if you were to have, you know, 25K account or 300K's worth of accounts or whatever it may be. Okay, so in order to achieve these results, we're gonna to have to compound the account. And I'm sure that you've heard the term compounding and compounding your account thrown around left, right, and center. Now, whilst this video won't go into compounding in, in the uh, sort of deep foundations of it, I'll just give a brief explanation just for those that don't quite understand it, just so as you can understand enough to move on to the next part of this video. And perhaps I'll do one specifically on compounding as a separate video altogether. Simply put, the principle of compounding is reinvesting your profits instead of taking them out or ignoring them. So if we take the example of a £1,000 account, if you make 10% in month one, that means you make £100, the 10% of the thousand. Now in month two, instead of just withdrawing that 100 or ignoring it, you add it to your um, starting balance. So that means that your starting balance in month two is 1,100. So that means in month two, when you make 10%, you'll be making um, £110 profit instead of the £100 that you had initially made in the first month. Now, when you add your £110 profit to the £100 profit you made in month one, that's £210 profit. And then that means that with your existing starting balance of 1,000, you would start month three on 1,210 pounds. And with that same logic going through month three, if you made 10% on the 1,210 pounds, you'd make 121 pounds profit. So when you add all the profits together, that's 121 plus 110 plus 100. So overall, with your existing um, starting balance, you'll end on £1,331. Now, if you hadn't compounded it and you'd withdrawn your profits each month, so each month you started with a flat 1,000, you would have made the 10% on each month, so that would have been £100 per month, so therefore £300 in profits. But compared to the compounded version, where you've made £331, it means that you've made an extra 10% on the same period of time. Now, 10% here is obviously not very much. You know, you've only made an extra 31 pounds, or I mean, it's just over 10%, right? But you just made an extra sort of 30 quid. So it's not particularly impressive. But imagine that with another few zeros on it. And that's when you can start understanding how it can really start snowballing and how it can make the big difference in terms of having, you know, fantastic years and really growing capital rather than it just being churning out on a, on a regular basis. So with this in mind, and for the first example, I'm gonna go on the basis that you are a 10% a month trader, that you average 10% per month. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you'll make 10% every single month. It could mean that you make a loss one month. It could be that you do 20% on another month. But what I'm looking at is an average over the course of 12 months of it being 120% overall and however that's dispersed. But for the sake of ease, I'm gonna break it down into, into monthly components so as you can understand the workings. And for that purpose, I'm gonna do it for 10% per month returns. There are the other assumptions I'm gonna make as well is that you are trading on a 100,000 US dollar account. So in the UK, we will need to convert dollars into pounds. And also we will be needing to pay tax on the FTMO. Now, of course, you would potentially be paying tax on your uh, profits on your personal account as well, but you will most definitely have to on FTMO. So I'm going to put a factor in of 35% on that, and I'll be including that as a deduction in these calculations. So let's say in the example, as we said, you start with £1,000 in your personal, you make the 10%, that means that you make £100 on your personal account. Now with your US dollar account on FTMO or funding talent or whatever it may be, you make 10%, that means that you make $10,000. Now with FTMO, I'm gonna run the examples with because this is the worst case scenario. Obviously funding talent, the profit split is 80-20. With uh, FTMO, it's 70-30. So I'm gonna do it with FTMO because I know a lot of people do have an FTMO account and it's the most common at the moment. So they have their 70-30 split. So that means that you get $7,000 of the 10,000 that you've made with that 10% month. Now that 7,000 US dollars converted into um, pounds if you're in the UK, at today's sort of current day rate, it's there or thereabouts is 5,000 pounds. And let's assume, as I said, with the tax that you're gonna pay 35% tax, that leaves you with a, a net profit of 3,250 pounds from your 10% month on FTMO. So from there, we'd add that straight into your personal account. So that means that you've already earned the 100 pound, uh, the 10% that you made on your 1,000 pound personal account, and you would add the 3,250 pound. So that actually means that you're adding uh, 3,350 pounds onto what your starting balance was in month one. So overall, that together, which is the 1,100 plus the 3,250, gives you the 4,350 pounds that you'll be starting month two with. So in essence, by doing this, you've actually quadrupled the account over the course of just one month. Most people wouldn't see it this way because if they are just focusing on the prop firm, they've probably gone away and spent that money or, or doing other things with it. But ultimately, it's a good start in that, in that one month. Now, as I said, I'm averaging these as 10% per month, but really I'm working it out as a yearly return of 120%. This isn't taking into account scaling options like you would get with the FTMO. So for example, in FTMO, if it's uh, across four months, you need two in profit and you need to make 10% over that period 
of four months. And if that is the case, they will increase your capital by 25,000. So obviously that would be a byproduct and that would increase these figures. But I'm working on a worst case scenario, not including all of the variables. So for the sake of ease, I'm just gonna keep it as that you will just have the $100,000 account month on month and we'll be making 10%. So what that does mean is that now we've worked out what the 10% means, i.e. the $10,000 converted to pounds and then we pay the tax on it. Each month, I'm just gonna give that as a set fee of 3,250 that we would earn from FTMO. So let's head back to where our account is now. So we've got the 4,350 pounds. So then if we do another 10% month on our personal account, that means that we earn 435 pounds from that. Add that to the starting balance, you've now got £4,785 in the personal account. Then you add your £3,250 from FTMO, and then that brings you to a round figure of about £8,000. So hopefully you got the idea now, so that's £8,000 after two months. So now let's look further into the distance, and I'm gonna put a graphic up here so as you can understand it as well. Let's look at what that would look like over the course of 12 months now. And as you can see now, as I said, this isn't taking into account the scaling options in FTMO, and this is only taking into account one $100,000 account where you can have multiple as well. But if you look after 12 months, that personal account will be worth £70,000. And if you go as far as 15 months, that's where you reach the 100K. So this is hopefully a realistic breakdown of where you can see if you are a 10% trader that you could be at six figures in as soon as 15 months from the starting date, providing you've got your FTMO account and your personal account at 1,000. And here you can see that if you changed nothing and just carried on going, didn't take any money out, went for another further nine months to get to the two year mark, your personal account would actually be worth 300,000 pounds. Then at the end of that three year mark, if you changed nothing and just carried on the rate you were going, you would hit the million. Now, if I'd started this video and went, how are you gonna become a millionaire in three years, it's this easy or whatever, people would have turned off and it would have been a load of nonsense. This isn't easy, but the point is, is that it is feasible if you do know that you could average 120% a year, that you could hit a million in, in three years. And hopefully by breaking this down and understanding the compounding of the personal account using the prop firm, that this has given you a bit more scope in terms of what could be achieved. Remember, as I already made a point of, this is just with one $100,000 prop account and also 1,000 pounds starting balance in your personal. There are multiple variables. So if you had multiple FTMO accounts, if you had the scaling option, if you had funding talent accounts as well, if you were um, adding to your personal account if you of your own, and also if you started your personal account at a higher amount, you know, there's so many different options. So this is just the basic um, scenario just so you can get an idea before you go away and start making your own goals. And of course, needless to say, yes, I am factoring 35% um, in terms of taxes for the FTMO, but depending on your setup and structure, of course, you would probably have to be paying taxes as well in terms of your earnings on your personal account. Um, but obviously I can't make a prediction on that because it does vary depending on the individual and the way that they're structured. Now, the other big question that was raised in this video, and one thing that gets asked a lot is, you know, what's a realistic time frame to be able to quit your nine to five? How much would you need to earn? How quick could you earn it in order to take control of your own finances and become your own boss? Now, if you take into account this example, and let's say you did it for 15 months and you got your personal account to the 100,000 pounds. If from there you didn't carry on compounding and you took out your FTMO profits and also your profits from your personal account each month, just so you started the month with the flat balance each time, you'd be making around 13,250 pounds a month, or in essence, that's just under 160 k a year and for most people that you speak to if they're earning 159k a year without having a boss and being able to do it on their own that's probably a comfortable figure for them to step away and be able to do this full time so in answer to the question i would say the comfortable amount if you're a 10 percent per month trader is probably around sort of 12 to 15 months where you could earn a good living just by using the capital that you've built up but just for the sake of nine months if you if you held out and you got to the two-year mark and you built that account up to 300,000. At that point, even if you were still taking your 3,250 from FTMO and you were taking the profits from your personal account as well, you'd be looking at earning around 33,250 pounds per month or for all intents and purposes, just under 400K a year. Now, most people would be absolutely overjoyed in order to be earning this. And to be honest, so the time frame would be around two years. I mean, this is obviously assuming that you've got the account, as I said, and that you're you know, a fairly confident trader and that you are averaging about 10% per month. But this is food for thought in terms of you know how you could go about it and what could be potentially possible. And of course, the other one that we did mention, if you did hold out for the three years and you didn't touch it and you managed to sit on your hands and you got the account back up to that million over the course of three years, even if you were doing the same thing of drawing that money out, you'd be earning about 1.24 million a year or around 100,000 pounds a month. Now, hopefully from what you can see here is the, the difference in the shift in mentality. Now, the prop firms are really, really good in the short term because you know if you remember when we were given the example of the 1,000 pound account, we earned 10%, we only earned 100 pounds, but then on FTMO, we were earning 3,250 after we had paid our taxes on the FTMO amount. So we had quadrupled the account in the space of a month, but 90% of that actually came from the FTMO. So that's why we put it on this pedestal and a lot of people do focus on it. It. But if you look at it for the short term solution and then factor in the big term picture, now if we're talking about the in let's say a middle example where we're at 300,000, 
in terms of the, the account size. When you take 10% of your personal account, then you're actually earning 30,000 pounds from your personal account and you're keeping 100% of that profit. Whereas on FTMO, you'd still be stuck with your 3,250. So that's what I mean. If you keep it strategic and smart and you keep evolving it correctly, your personal account does become the sort of the treasure chest, if you like, and the one where you're gonna be putting most of your efforts. And it just so happens to be the one with most flexibility. And it's the one that's least likely to just be taken away from you. Now, of course, I've done this with 10% in terms of a monthly return. And I know that there are gonna be loads of people saying, yeah, that's all well and good, but you know, you can't make 10% a month. You can't average 120% a year. It doesn't matter what people say you know it's unrealistic okay fine so let's go through some lower amounts where people may see it as a bit more realistic so let's chop that in half and let's go with five percent and let's see what the equivalent figures will work out with that now of course these are take these are exactly the same in terms of what i did with the 10 percent returns so the same personal starting balance of 1000 the same that you'd be using a hundred thousand um, dollar ftmo account and that you'd be making five percent instead of ten percent and of course we'd still pay that 35 percent tax on it so exactly the same scenario but the only difference is that we'd be only five percent per month on the personal and ftmo not 10. Okay, and as you can see here, with the 5% option, after one year, you'd be looking at being on 38K. After two years, you'd be looking on being on 105K. And in three years, you'd be looking at being on around 225K. And now to put that into perspective, if you did do that and you ended up staying the stead of three years and whatnot, and then decided that you were just gonna use it as an income, so you were just gonna withdraw your profits and keep your capital as it was, you'd be earning just over 13,000 pounds per month or around 163.5K per year. Now, in most cases, I know a lot of people would be like, yep, that sounds great. And that is something that would make them want to step away from their normal nine to five job. And it would be a respectable salary for them to work on. But even let's look at it. Even if you left it after the two years, when you're at 105K because you wanted to leave earlier or you wanted to start, you know, being your own person from, from that point, at the two years when you're on the 105k mark, you'd actually be making seven and a half thousand pounds per month or around 90,000 pounds per year. Overall then, in answer to the initial question of how long would it take in terms of you to leave your nine to five based on 5% uh, returns, I'd say in this scenario, probably two years would be comfortable because then you'd be on around a 90k salary yourself. Obviously you wouldn't need to withdraw all of that money. You know, you could reinvest some of it and, and whatnot. But realistically, I think that would be a comfortable amount and probably a good thing to aim for is two years of complete consistency, get your account to that amount, prove that you're averaging 5% per month, and then at least you know with a level of certainty that you should be earning around 90K a year. Okay, and now I know I hear, I hear people that's gonna be saying, okay, yeah, but I don't average 5%, that's unrealistic still. You know, I really average between three or 4%, for example. So this is the last example I'm gonna do, but let's run through 3.5% per month average returns, and let's see how long it would take you to get to a point where you could earn a decent salary off of it. This again, making exactly the same assumptions that you're using a $100,000 US dollar account. You're starting with the £1,000 starting balance on your personal account. You'll be giving um, FTMO their 30% split, so you keep the other 70, and then you'd be paying 35% tax on the FTMO profits before putting it into your personal account. So as you can see here on the 3.5% returns, you would get to 25K after just 12 months. You'd be on 61K after two years and 116K after three years. But it is worth noting on this that even only two years in when you're at the 61K, it may not seem like a huge amount of capital or particularly impressive, but when you actually use it for your own salary, you could be looking at earning around £3,750 a month or 45 k a year or thereabouts. And that's actually a really respectable salary given that you're only earning 3.5% returns. And I know for a lot of people, the reason may be that they're only earning 3.5% per month is because of the time that they can allocate, maybe because their job is actually taking over and they're, they're unable to actually dedicate enough time to even see if they could develop a higher average per month. But in terms of giving you an idea of what could be possible in, in the shortest period of time, earning modest returns of about 3.5%. Let's say if you were hell-bent on leaving your employment, after 12 months you got to the 25k, you could still be earning a monthly income of around 2.5k when you're including the FTMO payouts, which is obviously around 30k per year. And for a lot of people, depending on the job and how much restriction it's putting on your life, this might actually be a good enough salary for you to step away and go, hold on, you know, I can be in control of my days and potentially by having control of your days, you could earn more. So actually after 12 months, you could be on a 30k salary with that buffer of the 25k capital, which could have achieved within 12 months. Now, obviously, if we're talking about comfortable and whatnot, I would say again, in answer to the question of how long could you wait until you, you leave your nine to five. Here comfortably it'd probably be two years on 3.5% returns. It depends on where you live in the country, where you live in the world, and also what your goals are and what you're looking to do with it.
But the point is, is that hopefully this has given you some realistic figures to actually look at and digest um, as to what you could potentially aim for. As I said at the start, looking at the long game and the short game are two very different things. And if your long game is to leave a nine to five, I'd advise stop trying to do that within a month or two and then just look at these stats, understand what you need to do. Do you think realistically in yourself you're able to earn 3.5% per month? Then you look at those stats. If you think, well, you are averaging 10% per month, but you're just not very good at, at keeping the money or you don't really know what to do with it, then look at the stats for that and see how long you think you need. And hopefully that gives you some goals and things that you can set in order to get to that point where you do get a bit more financial freedom or at least being free from a job that you hate. So look guys, I'm gonna leave it there because I know uh, that I've probably lost a lot of people uh, on this video and if you are still viewing then this is uh, the video that was intended for you. So basically I know there's gonna be a lot of people that dislike it and have probably watched the first few minutes and they think it's a zero to a million pound scheme and all the rest of it. But hopefully for people that are serious about their trading, serious about compounding and serious about what they could achieve realistically not within two days or three days, what they could achieve over sort of a year, two and three years. Hopefully this has provided you some concept. Um, it has been, in my opinion, a fairly realistic overview. It's broken down those figures so as you understand where they've come from. And in a lot of cases, when you demonstrate these to people, they understand it in the first, like say one to six months. So when the end figure isn't very impressive, people are like, yeah, that's totally realistic. But then when you apply the same principle over a longer period of time and you get to those much bigger sums, people just write it off as impossible. So hopefully this has given you a bit of confidence maybe uh, giving you some goal setting and, and what you want to do in terms of setting you know what your what your kind of profit targets are or what you need to work on to be able to achieve this you know a realistic kind of light at the end of the tunnel as well instead of just trying to earn as much money as possible and deciding whether you can quit because you know it is a bit of a, a whirlwind out there i personally i wouldn't say that that going full time really helps but potentially if you're in a job that you hate um and you do just want to get out of it and it's a toxic environment then this really could be a route out and i hope that this has provided some value for you to be able to understand how long it could take and also to make sure that you know you've got the, the 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 motivation and want to put the work in to get there so as always guys if you have enjoyed this video and you are enjoying the content please just smash that likes up button it goes a huge way to supporting this channel and keeps me creating this content subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and always be sure to click on the alerts and notifications so you don't miss when i post my next video and on that note i'm usually here on a sunday and sometimes on a wednesday but if you do have any comments questions abuse just hurl it as always in the comment section below or grab me over on my instagram at matt million where i uh, post all of my daily live updates and um, my weekly ups and downs and whatnot i also try and get through all of my dms on a week basis so if there is something you want to speak to me personally about then feel free to grab me on there too but if i don't speak to you before have a good one and i'll catch you on the next video take it easy